shipping, the new king of commerce. Across all 23 American nations, old-fashioned trains, ships, and trucks are no match for the modern Zeppelin. Shipments have never been faster. Mountains, forests, and rivers? No problem for these luxury liners of the sky. But with modern air shipping comes modern air pirates, the scourge of the skies. Not since the days of wooden ships and iron men have pirates so cursed the world. Hunting the skies between the Americas for loot and cargo, and even the occasional kidnapping. But such villainy is answered in force. Government militias and private security companies have responded, raising their own air forces to fight the criminals, to beat the devils at their own game. Score one for the good guys. The Parade of Aces. The hair-raising adventures of these heroes have captured the imagination of the world. New York ladies man, loyal showstopper Crawford. Aviation security pioneer, Paladin Blake. Hollywood blonde shell, Charlie Steele. Ex-pirate turned pirate hunter, Easter Whitaker. The parade of infamy, the villains of the air. Double-crossing ex-Texas air ranger, the murderous Marshal Bill Redmond. From Wall Street Raider to Zeppelin Bandit, the vicious Jonathan Genghis Khan. The pirate with a secret purpose, the brilliant and mysterious Black Swan. Don't let her beauty fool you, boys. This one's too hot to handle. And the undertaker of the sky out of Skyhaven, cold-blooded newcomer Ulysses Booth. But the pirate's short life of fame, daring, and fortune always ends the same. In a twisted metal coffin. The battle rages on, but justice will prevail. The criminals of the air... What gives, boss? You, the world-famous Nathan Zachary, didn't even make it into this month's parade of infamy. <laughs> Trust me, Jacko. With what I've got planned, we will. Well, hey, folks. Research indicates here, and welcome to the Crimson Skies... Let's play. Now let's just dive right in. Start a new campaign here. LP is going to be our new player. Gonna continue here. Boss, this is Sparks. You still alive in there? Yeah. Geez, Skipper, you're missing the whole works. The party, the cookout, the women. When are you going to join us? I'll be down when I can, kid. See, I told you. He's not budging. Give me that thing. Gee, it's Tex. Not only are you missing Big John's choice eat, but Justine here says she ain't done with you yet. Nathan, where are you? We miss you. I miss you. <laughs> Chief, you play work too hard. Why, you only spent one night with the ladies. And what a night it was. See, blowing off steam's good for a fella. What I'm getting at, sir, is that it's been a tough month. We all know how sore you are about that rat Miles double-crossing us in Cuba, but he's sleeping with the fishes now, and you'll figure out some plan to make us all rich again. You always do. Tex, let's not ever talk about Lucas Miles again. Understood? Now I've got work to do. He's hopeless! Here, you try. Jack here. What are you reading now, Zachary? British politics, uh, shipping reports? The Secret Journeys, a Hawaiian oral history of Sir Francis Drake, 1578 to 1580. Got it yesterday. You see, you see, that's sad, that you need to get out more. Fascinating. Everyone thinks Captain Cook discovered the Hawaiian Islands in 1778, but in 1579, the English privateer Sir Francis Drake was here. He lost his largest ship, the Teresa, in a storm near here, off the Kapaui Islands, all hands presumed lost. Oh, wow, no kidding. 1579, cheese and crackers. You know, I'll be sure to tell the crew. Jacko? Yeah? We're not here for fun. We're here for treasure. Remember that leather map we pinched in Tortuga? Two years ago. Yeah, sure. How could I forget? I finally figured out what it is. It's the map of the Teresa's last route. Jack, she was full of stolen Spanish gold. And I think I found her. Oh, why, you old devil. You old devil. Alrighty, so we're gonna go try to find one of Sir Francis Drake's crashed ships. Now, as far as I know, Sir Francis Drake never came out to this uh, this end of the ocean, but uh, but I'm no Sir Francis Drake scientist. Now, let's see. We don't want any. Yes, yes. 
That's who we want, flying co-pilot. All right, now down here in the corner, you can see a little bit of a map showing the uh, the new nations of the United States here. All, uh, what they say, 23, 29 nations here. Oh, we can go into that in a bit more uh, detail later. But for now, here's our plane back here, the, uh, the Hughes Aviation Devastator. This is going to be our mainstay. It's a very, very good plane. And even uh, later on in the game, when we've got all sorts of other planes and weapons and things to choose from, we're definitely going to be coming back to the Devastator a lot. It's just a real solid platform in general. Back here is either another Devastator or maybe a Brigand. I'm really not sure. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and get cracking. Morning, everyone. Morning, yeah. sir. <laughs> Say, those Medusas must throw some kind of party. <laughs> the canned coffee can't help, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, here's the whole works. Jack's filled you in on the real reason we're in Hawaii. Drake's gold. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I've managed to narrow the list of potential sites down to three. The first site is in this cliff here, on the Kapaui Islands. Hey, how does shipwreck get way up there? We're looking for the treasure, Jack, not the ship. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the treasure. The survivors may have rescued the gold from the wreck and hid it up on this cliff. Or I figure they may have buried it in this valley here, at the second site. Or maybe the wreckage washed ashore into the same valley during a storm. Now, the third and last site's out here somewhere, probably in this reef. I'll need only one wingman for today's mission. Yeah, sure, make me do all the work. Actually, Jack, I was thinking of taking Betty. What? Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> You'll get over it, Jack. We gotta give the new pilots as much flying time as we can afford. It's pretty quiet out there today, so I'm gonna give Betty here some tips on how to fly like a fortune hunter. Besides, Jack, I want you to ride with me in my plane. We'll check out each site from the air, get the lay of the land. If we find anything, I'll circle back around so you can bail out and verify the location from the ground. Yeah, well, don't come crying to me when she you shoot your tail off or something, okay? Oh, you mean like that story Big John was telling me about you over Virginia, Jack? You know, the one where you shot up your own plane? Hey, hey, Remember hey that, that wasn't my fault. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> what do you know? New kid's got moxie. You're all right. Betty, I'll meet you outside, airborne in 15. The rest of you, no more parties till we get this gold job sewn up. Yes, sir! Oh, what you yes, yeah. Whoa, okay, here we go. So it kicks us directly into the flight check. What we're looking at here is my plane, and then the plane of whatever wingman you have. Uh, my plane here is the, uh, the Gypsy Magic, uh, which is the stock airplane here. This is not a particularly creative setup here. We're going to change the ammunition in our guns first things first uh for the, let's see here the uh, 50 cal is always good now let's see we've got a 30 cal a 40 cal and a 50 cal 30 cal is effectively useless it's got a very long range but does very 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 little damage uh instead i think we're going to be focusing on our 40 and 50 cals now you see we've got a couple of different uh, ammo types here your slugs are your absolutely standard bullets regular old copper jacketed lead bullets flying out smacking into things these do average damage to everything uh pretty nice if you don't really know what you're gonna be getting yourself into dum-dums here are uh, effectively hollow point bullets these uh these deform on impact and they uh, do a great deal of damage to the uh the interior of the plane to the uh, to the engines and uh, and various other things a plane that has already lost all of its armor uh, should be shot with dum-dums and here we have the armor piercing bullets the armor piercing bullets are what uh, do all the damage to the external armor and then you got the extern uh, explosive uh, bullets these are a little silly so generally you want to have a nice combination of armor piercing and dum-dum if you follow up with a nice one-two punch, you open up with the armor-piercing bullets, you uh, deplete all the armor, and then you uh, wrap it up with the dum-dums here, which uh, do all the damage to the internal components. It works pretty nicely, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, that can be difficult to remember. Now we've got some rocket uh, choices to choose from. We've got high explosive and armor-piercing. More become available later in the game, but these are really the only two you're ever going to need. Uh, high explosive is fairly self-explanatory. This goes out a couple of hundred yards and then blows up. And then the armor piercing here needs to hit the plane to make it useful. And because of that, I'm probably not going to be using a lot of these. So, this uh, looks pretty good to me. We've got uh, slugs, armor piercing, and dum-dums. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Oh, and I'm not going to bother with uh, 
with the other air with airplane here, Betty's plane. Uh, doesn't really matter if you change their ammunition types, they're just gonna do whatever the hell they want. So let's go. You see here the Pandora. This is our airship. This would be a, a very large airship based on the number of engines that it's got, the size of the gas bags here, and the fact that it can launch and recover aircraft from its interior. It's actually got a hangar on the inside. This is indeed a flying aircraft carrier. Very impressive. Uh, they mainly only exist here in the Crimson Skies universe. They certainly did exist in, uh, in our world, but uh, they were phased out pretty quickly due to uh, a number of issues and accidents and various other things. I'll address that later. Good luck out there, you two. Go make us millionaires. Yeah, and Betty, try not to kill the boss, okay? He's the only friend I got, you know. Oh, sorry to hear that, Jack. I'll do my best. Follow me, Betty. Try to get a feel for your plane and keep your eyes peeled. Yes, sir. Can't seem to find Betty. There's one of the sights over there. See it? Stone carvings could give a guy the creeps. Fly close to it, boy, to see if you can see anything. There might be something else good down there. Those carvings are the beginning of a cave. Say, there's an old That ridiculous down thing down there. was a, uh, a spider web. Secrets. Golden secrets. Attention, unidentified aircraft. This area is under British authority. British? Well, that's funny. I thought this was Hawaii, not Hong Kong. Leave at once. You will be fired upon. Say, pal, you need to learn some manners. Let's take them out, Betty. I don't like flame jumpers. Yes, sir. Kiss that bridge goodbye. Tough break. But no one's getting between that treasure and us. Okay, here's site number two. Gonna take a quick look at that. Looks like some sort of camp. I'll bet it belonged to a survivor of the wreck. Worth checking out, boys? Definitely. So we're gonna zip all around, take a look at various things here. Now let me show you something here. Here's our internal view. If I look backwards now, we see this, uh, this ugly guy. This is our co-pilot, that is Jack. I don't much care for him. There we go, Galleon. Boss, do you see it? That a girl. That's it, all right. Now that's the main treasure site. I'm sure of it. Jack, I'm going to fly over the site again. Get ready to bail out for a closer look. Coming around, coming around. Okie doke. So, gonna throw this guy overboard. Jack is away. Let us know what you find down there, buddy. Pandora, this is Jack. Moving to Site 3. Looks like we hit the jackpot. Copy that! Pandora on the way! No need to follow that order, Sparks. Now that you've found our treasure, Nathan, you and your floozy can scram. If you know what's good for you. Oh dear. <laughs> your treasure. Nice try, sister. But this claim is mine. Pirate's Code, fair and square. You tell Justine that spending a night with me does not mean she gets to spend my loot. Yeah? Well, maybe a little swim will change your mind. Medusa's coming in, sir! The Medusa's have a cargo zeppelin coming in. British markings on it. Probably stolen, judging by the state of it. Looks like they're making a play for the treasure right now. We have to stop that zeppelin. Are those spare fuel tanks stacked in the cargo bays? <laughs> they have shoot me written all over them. Good. I'll take them. Hey, Good eye, Penny. We hit those tanks. That should put a kink in their plans. All right, if these guys are done, Talking here we are in our first dog fight. We're fighting We're fighting around an enemy zeppelin, which is generally a poor poor idea Because uh, they tend to be you run, but you cannot hide. Bristling with uh, with oh, Bristling with guns you generally don't want to be messing with those guys, uh, but uh, this one is uh, Nothing really to worry about uh, I'll fly under it here. You see it's uh, it's kind of got uh, it's Behind teeth you pulled. At you see nothing really happening here. Uh, let's see here. So, gonna switch weapons here. Going to armor piercing. Whoa! There's my buddy. Gonna open up with the old armor piercing and do the one-two punch. On your left, at nine o'clock. 
Do I want to go until we see some fire? There we go. So, let's wrap it up with the dump. Whoa! She better not steal my kill. Let's wrap it up with the dum dums here. There we go. Uh, all right. Let's see. And we got one more to worry about over here somewhere. Let's see. Oh, let's just deal with this. Huh? Goodness. Well, that is why you generally don't want to. Uh, don't want to put hydrogen in your uh, zeppelins. How do you say? You run, but you cannot hide. Sometimes you don't have a lot of choice. All right, let's see. Looks like we got one Kestrel left. There's the Pandora over there. Just a few dents over. Not sure what this Kestrel thinks it's doing. Switching over to Dum Dums. Oh, 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 oh. There's the trouble with chasing a plane that you are, uh, that is slower than you. City, Betty. You're a regular wildcat. <laughs> Not a half bad pilot either. I just don't like no one calling me floozy, that's all. Whoa. You women will be the end of me. You see any more Medusas? No, why? You looking for a date? Ha! I draw the line at dames who shoot at me. That's not what I heard. <laughs> Touche. So, how are you feeling after your first proper fight? You want to head back to the Pandora and call it a day, or scout around some more? I'm good, boss. Whatever you want, I'll follow you. Welcome home, Skipper. So, are we rich yet? Looks good, kid, but we shall see. Okie do, coming around. Got a dock. Now they actually uh, modeled this uh, very accurately uh, as far as all this goes. This is almost identical to uh, to how the airplanes that launched and were recovered from Zeppelins actually uh, did this. They flew along, had a big hook, and uh, hooked it onto one of these deals here and were reeled into the uh, interior of these airships very impressive and I'm uh, I'm surprised they added that into the game though they do let you skip that because it's a good way to crash at the very end of the mission and have to do it all again there is no saving in uh, mid-mission hooray here we go and so at the end of each mission you get this uh, little scrapbook here you get to poke around and see what we've got here the Aloha Daily, we've got a little uh, little news article about uh, about what happened there. That's always uh, that's always fun. So you continue along here, global quarter. Okay, we've got a uh, got a something here. What is this? Okay, some uh, some archaeologist talking about how uh, how much he likes what we found over there, and then uh, what appears to be a Spanish doubloon, uh, no doubt from uh, Drake's ship. I can't read that. Uh, looks cool, anyway. Oh, and yeah, check it out. You can export these to your desktop. You can make uh, make screenshots or, or stuff out of things. Uh, okay, so over here we got a little stamp. We got uh, shows I shot down three kestrels. A regular airplane enemy uh, will be displayed like this. If it's a boss or or, uh, or a named character, it'll have a great big star behind it. Uh, let's see, and then down here we got uh, got the data. I got 12% uh, hit ratio, not very good. Cash earned, f either four or nine hundred bucks. Can't quite make it out with that font. Uh, and then you use that money to buy uh, upgrades later on. Let's see. Uh, oh, got uh, got a little bit more stuff here. Okay, this is the uh, the thing that we were looking at earlier. Uh, let's see. You got um, it appears to be a journal entry from a, uh, a crew member. So that's cool. Uh, I'm not gonna look at that right now. Uh, and then here we have a, okay, it was 900 bucks. Okay, cool. Uh, $900 from the nation of Hollywood. That's very nice. And when we flew through the uh, cave there, that was a, uh, uh, I forget what they call it, but a little, uh, 
uh, like a barnstorming event, and every time you do a, uh, an optional thing like that, you, they uh, take a picture of it, and you can export it to the desktop, and you get your little captured image of it right there. It's very impressive. So, there we go. There's our first mission. Let's return to the cabin. And so now we got a little bit of money, we can go into the plane construction, but unfortunately we don't have enough to make any uh, any changes to anything right now. You have to be able to afford the airframe that you're manipulating first, and unfortunately the Devastator is quite a bit more than $900. So, that's it for mission number one. Hope you enjoyed it, stay tuned, we're going to come along to mission number two, and now it's time to take a closer look at our Devastator. Okay, time to take a look at our plane. We start the game with the Hughes Aviation P-21 Mark III Devastator. Built on an innovative airframe that seems to defy the passage of time, the Devastator has kept pace with several generations of aerospace technology, despite being one of the oldest designs still in production. The Mark III delivers an excellent blend of firepower, speed, and maneuverability. With three pairs of guns ranging from 30 to 50 caliber, the Devastator can take to the skies with a deadly mix of munitions for optimum damage. The underwing ordnance racks add a slew of rockets to the firepower the Mark III can bring to bear, and a modern Tornado G450 engine delivers over 1,450 sheer horsepower, pushing the Mark III to a competitive 270 miles per hour. The biplane configuration makes the Mark III particularly agile for its weight class. With thousands of variants available, the Devastator is one of the most unpredictable and deadly aircraft in the air today. All right, it's time for the plane of the day. Today's plane saw action in World War II as a heavy fighter and was called the Fork-Tailed Devil by the Luftwaffe and two planes, one pilot by the Japanese. Today we're looking at the Lockheed P-38 Lightning. Developed to strict interceptor requirements for the United States Army Air Corps, the P-38 had a distinctive twin boom profile with a single central nacelle containing the cockpit and armament. It was used in a number of wartime roles, including dive bombing, level bombing, ground strafing, photo reconnaissance, and long-range escort. During the war, the Lightnings were called in as escorts. The tremendous power of the twin engines gave the Lightning a stunning dive attack against the German fighters, though it was not as maneuverable as its Luftwaffe opponents. Soon, the Lightning was employed in a ground attack role where it excelled. By the end of the war, the P-38 was being phased out by the jet-powered P-80, America's first production model jet aircraft. But to those who built, serviced, and flew the Lightning, it will always be one of history's truly great planes. 